In this video, we are going to learn about the thermodynamics of mixing. Specifically, what we're going to do is make an ideal solution with two components and analyze whether mixing of the components is spontaneous or not. All right, in the last few videos, we've worked really hard to derive expressions for the chemical potentials as a function of concentration in a variety of cases. And uh, that's what you see right here. This is all of the possibilities that we have explored. After all that hard work, it's now time to start to see why that matters, right? Some applications in which uh, that variation of the chemical potential with concentration is useful. And uh, the first one is just the thermo thermodynamics of mixing. It's, it's a simple one, but it's also a powerful one. All right, so let's see if we can get started here. Here's what we're trying to do. Uh, you have two components which in principle, or at the, at the start of this experiment, are separated and they are pure. Uh, and the only thing that we're going to do is simply mix them, right? So add them together in a container to generate a mixture in which the components are, uh, again, mixed together. And the only question that we're asking is whether this process, the process of the two uh, our components mixing well, when they're here, uh, is spontaneous or whether they prefer to be phase separated, right, so not mixing. Now, this process takes place at constant pressure and constant temperatures, so then we can use the change in Gibbs energy in that mixing process to determine whether this mixing will be spontaneous. If the sign of that Gibbs energy of mixing is negative, then we will know that the mixing is spontaneous. Now, these are ideal solutions, it's going to be an ideal solution. And what that means at the molecular level is that the interactions of A with B molecules are actually exactly, exact, exactly the same, or, or at least very similar, to the interactions of A with A when uh, that liquid is pure or unmixed, and the interactions of B molecules with B molecules when when they are by themselves, right? So, so again, there's no change in the interactions up and mixed, and that's kind of the definition of an ideal mixture. All right, so since our goal is to calculate what the change in Gibbs energy here is, the only thing that we have to do is calculate what the Gibbs energy is at the start of the experiment and at the end of the experiment. But we'll take the difference, and that will be the Gibbs energy of mixing, or the change in Gibbs energy in mixing. All right, so initially we have two components, uh, and that means that the total Gibbs energy will be the sum of the contributions of the two components. And each contribution is just going to be your partial molar quantity, which will be the molar Gibbs energy of A, multiplied by the number of moles of A, and the molar Gibbs energy of B, multiplied by the number of moles of B. Of course, those molar Gibbs energies we have reformulated, and we actually call them chemical potentials. Right, so uh, that's going to be the chemical potential of A and the chemical potential of B. And at the end of the experiment, uh, the formula is going to be the same. You just have two components, and you have that will be the chemical potential of A times the number of moles of A, and then the chemical potential of B times the number of moles of B. But there's a big difference between these chemical potentials. Notice that at the, at the start, those are pure components. So the chemical potential is the chemical potential of the components when pure. Right? And that's why we write this asterisk right here. And at the end, you actually have that they're not pure anymore. They're mixed. Right? So that chemical potential is not going to be a new star anymore. It's going to be something else. Right? So to figure out what that uh, chemical potential is, we actually go to our menu and then choose the one that is more representative for our experiment. And in this case, we're looking at an ideal solution, right? So we have, that will be the best expression for our chemical potential. So the only thing that we have to do is simply replace these chemical potentials by that expression. This is a liquid mixture. All right, so let's uh, try to do that. Notice that the chemical potential of A is going to be the chemical potential of A when pure, plus a correction, RT natural log of X sub A multiplied by N sub A. And then the chemical potential of B is just going to be the chemical potential of B when pure uh, plus RT natural log of the mole fraction of B multiplied by the number of moles of B. Okay, so that's what happens when you're mixed. Now your concentrations are no longer one mole fractions. You actually have that if you're mixed, it will be less than one.
All right, so we subtract these two, and uh, that gives us the change in energy when mixing. Right, so notice that this term that you have in this uh, parenthesis and you have to distribute, you're gonna have a chemical potential pure number of moles of A pure. That term is also right here. So the only terms that are gonna survive the difference is going to be the, uh, the terms with the natural logs, right? So you will have one that is number of moles of A, RT, natural log of the mole fraction of A, and then number of moles of B, and then RT, natural log of the mole fraction of B. Okay, great, so let's continue to make progress here. Uh, for one, what we actually uh, can do is, is uh, try to see if we put these two ingredients, the mole fraction and the moles, as a function, uh, or if we, if we can relate them. Right? And they can be related because the mole fraction of A is simply uh, the number of moles of A divided over the total number of moles, which I'm going to write as simply n. Okay, and what that means is that this n sub A that you see right here is simply x sub A multiplied by the total number of moles. Okay, so let's replace that here. That is that this is now going to be uh, n multiplied by x sub A, and we can do the same thing with the number of moles of B, what is just going to be n, the total number of moles, multiplied by the mole fraction of B. And we do that because now we actually are setting our, ourselves up to take common factor of these uh, three uh, values there and then come up with our final expression. All right, so if we take common factor of that nRT, we, we get that this is equal to nRT, and then x sub A, mole fraction of A times the natural log of x sub A, and mole fraction of B times the natural log of the mole fraction of B. All right, great, that is our final expression. That is the Gibbs energy of mixing. So the only thing that we have to do then is to determine the sign. Okay, so this is positive, positive, positive. Uh, so for or in order for this to be spontaneous, the parenthesis has to be negative. Okay, so uh, the mole fractions are positive, uh, but then there are going to be numbers that are between zero and one if this is a true mixture. And of course, the natural log of a number between zero and one is always negative. That means that if you're mixing this at all, the parenthesis will always be negative. And that means that the Gibbs energy of mixing is always negative as well. Four ideal solutions. Okay, so again, the, the condition here is that this is an ideal solution. So uh, the interactions of, of the uh, molecules of the component are of the same type and of the same strength as uh, the interactions of the pure, uh, among the molecules of the pure components before mixed. Okay, that's great. Now, uh, we can actually learn a little bit more about the thermodynamics of mixing by analyzing the origin of this spontaneity uh, of mixing. And to do that, we can now uh, come back to our uh, Gibbs energy of mixing and notice that that should be uh, that, that should be related to the enthalpy of mixing and the entropy of mixing, right? So a question that we ask ourselves is, well, which one of these two terms, the entropy or the enthalpy, is more important in determining uh, the Gibbs energy of mixing? Well, the, the answer to that question is trivial. If this is an ideal solution, that means that the interactions don't change upon mixing, right? So the interactions that A molecules are experiencing here are the same when, uh, that as when they appear, and the same thing for B. If there's no change in the inter interactions, what that means is that the enthalpy of mixing is actually zero. And again, that happens for only for ideal conditions. And what that means is that uh, the, ethyl, the, the Gibbs energy of mixing, uh, this process being spontaneous, is dominated by the gain in entropy when you mix, right? So this is an entropically driven uh, process. Right, we can actually conclude this by realizing that then uh, we can actually come up with a, a nice expression for the change in entropy in mixing, and we should be positive. All right, uh, and that is just going to be the Gibbs energy of mixing divided by minus t, right? So we take this expression, divide by minus t, and what we get is that it's going to be minus nR x of a natural log of the mole fraction of a plus the mole fraction of b natural log of the mole fraction of b. 
And the sign is going to be also quite obvious. Notice that again the parenthesis is the same thing as up, as up here and that means that it's always negative. With that negative sign over here that means that you're always gaining entropy when you're mixing these components. Alright, so this video has represented a first application of chemical potentials. Uh, what we've been able to learn is that uh, the mixing of, of ideal uh, components to make an ideal solution is spontaneous and that spontaneity is driven by again entropy.